Okay, we're going to talk about the natural base E. Uh, natural base E is also called Euler's number, Euler's number after Leonard Euler. Uh, the special number, like pi or i, that represents by, represented by the letter E. It's an irrational number, one that doesn't end there. Um, to obtain the natural base E, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to focus it on the compound interest formula that we learned in our last lesson. So I've set, left, listed it there and what each part represents. And I'm going to modify it a bit by letting P, R, and T equal 1 so that we can just focus on the number of times per year the interest is compounded. So if we do that, we end up with the formula A equals 1 plus 1 plus N over, or 1 over N all to the N power. Okay, so P is 1, R is 1, okay, and T is 1. So that allows us to focus in on N. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the oops, next piece here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill out this table where we have uh, where we start um, uh, changing values of n. So we're going to start uh, making n progressively bigger. All right, so find out what the amount is as n increases. So when n is 10, we put, and I'll just show here, we'd have a equals 1 plus 1 over 10 to the 10th power. And if we do that, we end up with 2.59. And I'm going to go to four decimal places there. Okay. And if we put 100 in, so we have A equals 1 plus 1 over 100 now, all to the 100th power. There's that one. There's that one. We end up with 2.704. Eight. And we continue to put a thousand in. With a thousand, we get 2.7169. With 10,000, we get 2.7181. With 100,000, we get 2.7183. And with 1 million, we get 2.7183 out to four decimal places. So there's a key on our on our calculator that's e. Um, or e to the power of x, and if you use that one, you want to put the first power. Find the value of e. All right, well, when we put e in, we end up with 2.718281882, okay? And it keeps going on. If we round to three decimal places, or four decimal places, that's 2.71813. All right. That's an approximation, all right? So the natural base E is an irrational number that approaches 2.7183, approximately there, all right? <clears throat> now what that really means is um, as you are continually increasing that value of N or continuously getting to bigger or more and more compounding periods in a year, you get this value that you're approaching. Get really, really close to approximately 2.7183. And we call that value E. Okay, it's a number. Um, and we use that when we're using continuously compounded interest. When interest is continuously compounded, the compound interest formula can be simplified using the number E, and it approximates to A is equal to P, times e to the rt power, okay, e being the natural number e, p is the principal, or initial investment, okay, and a is our amount, okay, r is still the rate, decimal, and T is still time. Okay, so that's the con um, compound continuously compounding interest for me. I want to focus on the words continuously compounded or compounded continuously. Now we use E a lot in sciences, um, uh, like if something is growing or decaying in in nature, we call that um, we use that number appears a lot because you can't. 
like if something's decaying out out um, outside, if something maybe there's something a, a leaf is decaying or something, it doesn't stop decaying. It continually continuously decays. So uh, that that number e can appear in nature quite a bit. So you see it in your sciences. But let's actually explore using the um, compound interest formula. Let's say we deposit four thousand in dollars into a bank that earns. 3% uh, interest, annual interest compounded continuously. By the way, if you ever get that deal, that seems like a pretty darn good deal. You're continuously compounding. As you are breathing, you're, in interest, you're, you're making money on your money. That's a good deal. What will the balance be in your account after 10 years? Well, let's go ahead and use it. Oops, let me zoom back out here. Okay, so we get A is equal to PE to the RT power. And so that's going to be the amount is equal to our principal of 4,000. There's our P, um, times E, our rate, 0 0.03 in decimal form, and T, there's our time. Okay, so we'll multiply that by 10. So we end up with, um, we'll round it up here, 5399.44, 5,000. $399.44 when we round. All right, so the key phrase continuously compounded or compounded continuously. That's how we use it. It's not too difficult. Let's go ahead and simplify some expressions using natural base E. We're going to, and E is not a variable, but if we treat it as it were a variable, we would think of this as E to the 7, since the same base base E, 7 plus 6 power, which would be E to the 13th. It's not a variable. It represents a number, but we treat it that way as when we're, doing, when we're applying the properties of exponents. So use the properties of exponents that we've already learned here. Okay, so on this one here, it would be 20 divided by 5, and then E to the 8th over E to the 4th. So 20 divided by 5 obviously is 4. e to the 8th over e to the 4th, same base, so you subtract the exponents. So that's 4 e to the 4th. And the same thing applies here. We're just going to bring that 3 in to the 2. We're going to bring it into this power here. So we have 2 to the 3rd times e to the negative 4x times 3. 2 to the 3rd is 8, and this is e to the negative 12x. We don't want to leave a negative exponent, so remember what that means is you think of it in fraction form. The thing that's being raised to the negative power would move down, so we have 8 over e to the 12x. When we move it, we drop that negative. All right. Okay, well, let's go ahead and look at some graphs here. We're graphing these. Um, it really, um, it's a bit different notation, but the function in the form y equals a times e to the rx is a natural base formula. Um, notice, or excuse me, the natural base function. Notice r is up in the power position, uh, just like it was in the PERT formula. To graph the natural base function, first find the y-intercept, which is the same as graphing you think back to y equals a, b to the x, we're graphing it the same way. It's just um, really when we want to know if it's growth or decay, we have to look at r, okay? and r is in our power position. All right, so um, graph the function, does the, graph, does the function represent growth or decay? Well, you could tell that once you graph it, but if I look at it right now and think of this as f of x is equal to a, times e to the rx. Well, r is 1, right? Because there's nothing in front of the x, so it's 1x. Well, if r is greater than 0, then it's growth. If it's less than 0, it's decay. That is greater than 0, so it's growth. Okay? And so when I'm plotting the or graphing this, it's going to be 2 times e to the power of x. x is still zero when we're finding the y-intercept. So that's going to be 2 times e to the zero. And note your a term is your y-intercept. Okay. All 
All right. And now we plug in 1, get 2 times e to the power of 1, which is just 2 times e, which is 5.4-ish. Okay, and 2, 2 times e to the power of 2, which is 2 times e squared, which is about 14.8. And now negative 1, we get 2 times e to the negative first. Well, note negative first, that really means 1 over, or excuse me, 2 over e, which is 0 0.7. And negative 2 is going to be 2 times e to the negative second, which is 2 over e squared, which is 0 0.3. No, e is 2.7, so you have 2 over 2.7-ish. So a smaller number over a bigger is going to be less than 1. Smaller over a even bigger is going to be even more less than 1. Okay? My base still here is e, 2.7-ish. So I'm multiplying by approximately 2.7 each time, right, the base, or the e, the value of e, and it's approximation of e. All right, so when I'm graphing this, I'm going to have negative 2, 0 0.3, negative 1, 0 0.7, 0, 2, 1, 5.4, and 2, 14.8. All right, and there we got it. The domain, all real numbers. The range, y is greater than zero. Okay, and that is growth. Notice it's a growth. All right. Well, let's go ahead and try one more here. Okay, we have um, graphing this function. Does it represent growth or decay? Notice all we've done is made x negative 1, or x negative, which means our rate now, our r value, is negative 1. Okay, so r equals negative 1. When r is less than 0, it is decay. So does this represent growth or decay? It should represent decay when we're done graphing it. So we get 2 times e to the negative x. Okay, so that's going to be, we know our y-intercept is a. Okay, so we're going to have not x equals 2, x equals 0, so that's 2 times e to the 0, or negative 0, which is just 0, which is approximately 2.1. I'm sorry, 2 times 1, 2.1, 2, 2 times 1, right? e to the 0 is 1. We put negative or positive 1 in, we have 2 times e to the negative 1 which is 1 over, not 1 over, but 2 over e to the first, which is 0 0.7. So no, well, let me show you, let me finish this and I'll point that out. 2 times e to the negative second is 2 over e squared, which is 0 0.3. 2 times e to the negative, negative 1, which is actually positive 1, so 2 times e to the first, which is 5.4. And then we have 2 times e to the negative, negative 2, which is actually 2 times e squared, which is approximately 14.8. So if I'm graphing those, um, I'm at, uh, let's see, negative 2, 14.8-ish, right up there, uh, 5 point, negative 1, 5.4-ish. Okay, 0, 2, 1, 0 0.7, and there we go. All right, and so actually looking at that, oh, let me not fix that up there. For some reason, could not get my eraser to work. So well, there we go. All right. Kind of missed that point, but I think we get the gist there. Um, that is a decay function. My domain, all real numbers. My range, y is greater than zero. 
Okay. But one thing I want to point out. Look, when I had 2e to the negative x, okay, y equals that, my base, um, in this case, if you think of y equals a, b to the power of x, a is 2, but my base is e, okay, b equals e, all right, or e to the negative x. Well, e to the negative x is, if you think of e, that's approximately, E is approximately 2.7, okay? So it's 2.7 to the negative X. Well, 2.7 to the negative X, 2.7 to a negative means that I have to flip that. So that's going to be 1 over 2.7 to the X. So that means I'm going to have 1 over 2.7 to some power. Well, that is a number that is less than 1. So if you think back to your Y equals AB to the X, when b is less than 1, or it's b, if you think of it as between 1 and 0, that is decay. And what's happened here is by having a negative exponent, that, because, that puts the 2.7 in the denominator, which makes this decay. That's why when r in, when you're in this format, when r is less than 0, you get that negative, which makes it a fraction, which makes your function decay. Okay, that's what's happening there. And obviously if x is if x is a positive, so if we look back to our our previous one here, when we had our first one, um, y equals two times two point seven ish, well is e, right, to the power of x. So in our growth function, that's y equals 2 times 2.7-ish 2 to the x power. Well, this is a, this is b to the x. b is greater than 1. So when b is greater than 1, we have growth. Okay, so that's why um, these rules are in place here, when r is greater than 0 when you're dealing with this. Because if greater than 0, you have a positive exponent, which means e stays in the numerator with a. Okay, but when you have r being a negative value, r or e moves to the denominator, which makes it into a number between 0 and 1. Okay, I think that's it. Yep, all right, good lucky.